you know, uh, I was working, I was helping in the age action shop in Monaghan Town at the time. And uh, a friend of mine, Malcolm Totten, was trying to promote the age action and between between the age action shop and Mary Began and her staff in the shop and Ka Margaret Fitzpatrick, who was the in age action at the time, you know, we, we, we got things moving and we began with a photographic uh, class, a photography class down a place called the Blackwater Learning Center, which is down near near Emmy Vale, between Emmy Vale and Ochnacloy in County Tyrone. And that would pass it off on our way heading north, I'm sure. So um, uh, it's there. So that was where we got going initially with them, um, uh, with a photography class given by Malcolm Totten. Malcolm is a, a, an amateur photographer with a keen interest in photography, and he runs his own website called picturesofireland.ie. If you ever want to look mm. at it and check it out, you'll you'll get his 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 stuff there. Anyway, we, 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 we did that and uh, the Blackwater itself is an interesting place because uh, it was a community development uh, initiated by the local community there and has become an extremely successful and important component in the local social life down that area. Um, now, because of where we're located uh, here in Monaghan and, uh, and, and close to the border, we're fortunate that we have strong cross-border links. You know, we've had almost from the beginning uh, strong links with U3A groups north of the border. Uh, and in fact, uh, one of our first outings was with the Ern U3A, which is based in Enniskillen. Uh, we enjoyed a, a day's cruising on Loch Ern with them uh, in beautiful sunny summer, summery weather. And uh, they were our first major contact uh, across the border. But since then, we have developed strong relations with the, the Northern Ireland Regional U3A and people in it like Lila Jackson and, and others. And um, with individual U3As and Erin Foyle, Dungannon, Armagh, Newry, and Causeway, uh, who, 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 whom I see there, you know. Um, so, uh, we have been fortunate as well, being because of our location, I suppose we were in a prime position to benefit from some cross-border funds that promoted interact, community interaction and community development uh, on, on a cross-community basis. And uh, we had good contacts with Monaghan County Council and their social inclusion officer, Bernie Bradley. Uh, Bernie has been very supportive She's very progressive in her work in relation to, to, to what she has to do, and she's been very supportive to us from the uh, from day one. And I'm glad to see Mary Devlin there as well. Hello, Mary. Uh, all the way from uh, close to the Blackwater <laughs> Learning Centre. <laughs> um, so with all that, we were able to access various cross-border funds that 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 helped us to get get a bit of a sound financial footing going, you know, and ensure, ensure that any activity that we had, we kind of uh, were able to at least break even with it and, and not run ourselves into any kind of a, uh, financial, financial difficulties. Uh, one of the early things we did as well was, as Jerry knows, we established a website and we got uh, a cartoon. You probably, many of you have probably seen the cartoon, which is on our website and was developed by Geraldine's daughter, Dervla who is a graphic artist. And uh, uh, so they were, they were very um, substantial initiatives at the time and, and have been very successful for us. Um, so uh, we have been lucky in the team that we've had, uh, the people who have been with us over the years, as you say, the numbers, as Geraldine says, the numbers have grown from a very modest beginning to in the region of 600 plus at the present time. Although with all that's going on at the moment, we're not quite sure what the, the flux of membership is at the present time. Everything is kind of a bit at a standstill, but um, it's, 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 it, it has developed as a very strong uh, social community, inter-community, uh, intergener well, not so much intergenerational, but uh, cross-border community, Cross community group here in Monaghan, and um, with the way population aging is going, you know, there's there's uh, there's more and more of of a need for it, and and uh, 
we appreciate the uh, the support that Age Action gives us from time to time, and 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 and, and uh, uh, we would like to see the uh, the 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 uh, the process developed a bit further, and 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 like to see maybe more cross-border links between more southern groups and, and and groups in Northern Ireland as well, you know. So I don't know. That's uh, uh, well. Well, some of the early highlights where we we were we have had a various trips and one of those trips I remember well was going to Foil U3A and going to Derry and having a tour of, of Derry City and uh, being driven in the bus around the city and coming up uh, Shipkey Street to the Diamond in Derry and uh, the guide told the bus driver stop the bus he got out and he came back in a few minutes later and he had John Hume with him and uh, John was walking along the streets of the city and uh, John came in and, 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 and obviously the guide knew him well uh, as everyone in Derry seemed to know John well and uh, he, um, John said a few words to us and uh, we were delighted to see him and, and, and God rest him, you know, he was, uh, he was certainly a, a wonderful individual, you know, and uh, a great example to, 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 to everyone on, on this island and everywhere else. Uh, so we, we ran a few conferences over the years as well. We had, we've had the Commissioner for Northern Ireland speak to us. You know, she was Claire Keating. Uh, and and uh, we've had another one uh, about uh, climate change, I suppose, where we had uh, a group called the Raging Grannies. I don't know how many of you have heard of the Raging Grannies, but uh, the Raging Grannies came to us from Canada, where, where Elizabeth Vecina came from Canada to represent the Raging Grannies. And we were joined by a man from Bristol as well, who was part of the Grandparents for a Safe Earth. Uh, and that particular conference uh, has, as I say, a strong climate change element to it. And uh, the local Tidy Towns group then entered it in the National Tidy Towns competition as their contribution under the climate change section. And by gosh, didn't they win first prize? And we got a ball of money out of that too, you know? So thanks to them. And we had another one then on the intergenerational game whereby Age Action and Linking Generations and other groups uh, joined us in, 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 in organizing these things. We've been lucky. We've had good support from organizations and bodies locally and we get a bit of sponsorship. And the local Four Seasons Hotel has been very uh, accommodating for us over the years, you know. Anyway, that's maybe enough. Uh, I still have nightmares about that day with Thinking Generations because we did it, as Eamon said, in the Four Seasons Hotel. And I think you must have had four or 500 people in it. And okay. our intention was to break people into small groups and it just well, it turned into chaos, I think, <laughs> at the end of the day. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully people remember it for good reasons, not the way I remember yeah, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, yeah. Eamon, anyway, for very much for that, for just giving us a little bit of the story, I suppose, of how Monaghan came about. And Geraldine, do you want to take up the story there? At that yeah, stage? yeah. I shall. As Eamon said, we've been very lucky with volunteers and with people who will do it for nothing. We're, we're very kind of strongly emphatic <laughs> that when we get our speakers in, that we won't pay them for quite a bit, but or we don't pay them as such. Um, and we've been, people have been very obliging and very good for us, I must say. I got involved indirectly. My husband had retired and we have a big garden here. We have an acre. And uh, I think it was Eamon asked him to do a little bit of a talk on gardening and a little bit of demonstration. So he got involved that way. And then when I retired, I sort of joined in and um, I got a phone call from Malcolm Totten, as you can see, to sort of organises things. Uh, would I ever do a little bit of writing in the paper? Now, I was an English teacher, so it kind of fitted in with what I was doing. So I said, yeah, okay, I'll do it as long as there wasn't too much involved in it. Little did I know. Um, mm. And before, little by little, I got sort of sucked in onto the committee, onto the PR, and I'm currently chairperson. Um, you, you go out of the room at the wrong time, you get chairperson. So, what do we do in Monaghan? <laughs> um, really, our, our, our activities are divided into three areas. Physical, educational, and social. And we have, when we were up and running and really running properly, we had a huge range of stuff to do. Anything from um, walking, Pilates, line dancing, social dancing, bowls, swimming, chess, um, classes in French, Spanish, Irish, uh, the conferences that Eamon mentions, 
talks every month, art, computers, music appreciation, um, cards, parties, coffee mornings, poems and pints, I'll tell you about a bit more later on, book club, film club, gardening club, um, and the choir. Now all of these things, you know, it was really a case that if somebody came up with an idea and said, can we do a tin whistle, for instance, I said, well, do you know anybody who teach tin whistle and how much they cost? And, you know, can we keep the price down as much as possible? And uh, somebody come up and find the tin whistle and off they went. And we'd start a class and that's how it would go. If there was enough interest, off it went. So that's really the basis we work on. If we can find somebody to do it, if we can get it cheap, all the better. Um, and we sorted from there. The choir, again, started off on quite a small scale about four years ago. We now have 70, 80 members in the choir, including quite a few men, which is, you know, not as not usual. And um, we have, it has been really enjoyable and really great. Now, obviously at the moment we can't do the choir, but we were, we were very, um, we, the uh, U3As in the North have a thing called Song Fest every year. So we entered in it one year and then we were very cheeky. We offered to do it the following year to host it. So we hosted it again in the Four Seasons. We had all, oh, we had nine choirs, I think, from all, all across the North. And we had well over 300, 400 people in the place. Um, and the day went really well. We really enjoyed it, I must say. A bit nerve wracking, but we got through it and it went very well. Again, the county council helped us a little bit with the finances of it, but we largely financed it ourselves. So, um, they are the kind of things that when we were up and running, we did. We had a bit of a problem with location and a place of our own, but that's too long a story to go into. Uh, most of the time we were using, in the last year or two, we were using the soccer club in town at a very reasonable rate. And a very obliging guy there, Pora Casti, is great. He's, he runs the soccer club and he'd have the, stuff, the seats ready for us for choir or whatever it was. He never had to do anything. He always had it organised. It was brilliant. So when COVID hit and uh, cocooning hit, and you can imagine that most of our clientele are across the age where they had to cocoon, we were in a bit of a dilemma on what we would do. And we quickly realized that you would have to go use the virtual uh, meetings rather than real meetings. But the conundrum was that the people who needed most to, need to use it were the people who were least likely to use it. So Zoom was difficult to get across to people. That said, we kind of cajoled, anybody who knew how to use it, we kind of cajoled people and sort of showed, you know, of course you can do it. And the thing that worked really well was that Brendan Lillis, who was an ex-PE teacher and who had been chairperson of the U3A, he set up uh, an exercise class, um, Monday to Friday at half nine. He's moved it to half, quarter past eight on a Tuesday and he's just lost one member, me. Quarter past eight, it's far too early to get up. But, uh, it's half nine Monday to Friday, or it has been, and uh, we'd have a chat beforehand, and that was really good because people got there and they talked about things. You know, some people will be very much on their own, uh, very much isolated. So the chat beforehand was as good and effective as exercise that we did afterwards. We also induced other people to uh, use the class as well. So we had a variety of people giving the class. We had Tai Chi, we had Pilates. And we did exercise class. And that ran all the way to, to the end of July. We stopped in August just to give Brendan a break. And then we started again. Now he's only doing it on a Tuesday at the moment, but it's going to go back to the full week later on. So that was really effective and people really joined it. And we had up to 60 members. Uh, people come from all over the place, from Donegal, from Dublin, from France, um, from England, they joined in. We didn't keep it to just you three members, really anybody who wants to could join in for the hour session. And at the end of it, another of our members, Mary O'Hare, uh, would do a kind of a wind down, she did a meditation because she's into yoga. So she did a wind down at the end of it all. So you did your exercises and then you did your wind down. We also had our local, one of our local physios, Fiona Gilliland, did a class as well on, on one of the mornings. And again, very good because it's very much targeted at our age group very much targeted at preventing falls, preventing you know, damage, the kind of things that happen with older people. And again, very good for the mind and for the brain. So that worked really well. What else did we do during um, lockdown? Well, we kept up the book club and 
we actually did it more often than we would normally. We normally do it once a month, but again, so that people would be able to have a chat and, and a talk, we did the book club. So we talked about everything. And occasionally we talked about the book we were supposed to be reading, but uh, <laughs> we get around to it. Uh, and again, we did that all through up until um, August. And we took a break in August, started again there last week. Uh, we'll have it once a month now, but it's been very useful again to get people chatting, to get people to see each other, you know, to keep that social communication up that wasn't there. Um, our walks are back on. We do walking every Wednesday, and normally we would switch location, but again, because of the success route, we're sticking to our lovely Rossmore Park. We're very lucky, the lovely park uh, just outside the town. So you can do, and you can vary the walks. So every Wednesday morning at half 10, you just rock up and there you go and off you go walking. You keep your social distance and there you go again, a good group of people will turn up to it and it's really enjoyable. Um, the other thing we did, um, which we're going to do this next Thursday and you're very all very welcome to join in, is a thing called Pones and Pints. Now again, this was, Malcolm actually came up with this idea originally. And there, originally we used to meet in a local, little pub out in the country, out in Ballinod, where Eamon lives. And um, some people would have pints, some people had a cup of tea. And uh, we, you recited either poems, either your own or the ones that you had, you, you know, whoever, whichever poets you liked. So there's great variety and great amusement and it really entertained. So we did this on Zoom. It's not perfect. Um, it's a bit of two and a flown, but at least, again, it's a way of touching in things and people enjoy uh, the poems. And again, we have some very good poets um, who write their own stuff. And, you know, it's very interesting to see what people will come up with. We also got, we were able to keep on some of our talks. So we had three main talks um, during COVID. We had um, Shane Martin, who's a psychologist and also a poet. And he did a talk for us from Sligo on his poetry. He, was in Sligo. he is from Monaghan, but he was in Sligo at the time. He's actually Catherine Martin's brother. Was the minister for whatever she is? Minister for what's she minister for? Culture. What's Gale Catherine Martin? Huh? Culture Gale and Pops, the Gaelic of his Rudy Marchand. Culture and the Gaelic Pops. Yeah. So Shane is Shane is, is, is a brother of Catherine. Um, he was very good. And then we had uh, Ryan O'Neill, who is a psychologist, isn't he, Eamon? Yes. And he did it on coping with COVID and coping with the the the, the lockdown, that kind of thing. And then we had Alexia Trainer, who's a nutritionist, and she did a talk as well. So all of these people gave their time free gratis and for nothing, as they say, um, which was great. And that did help us, you know, keep together. Now, as I say, it's not perfect. We have over 600 members. We were getting through, if we got to about 100 of those who were doing well. Um, a lot of people join us because we go on trips, which I forgot to mention. People do day trips. We've done longer trips in Ireland, We've done trips to England. And we were supposed to do trips abroad. Carol would need to mute her phone, I think. So we do trips abroad. Um, uh, we were supposed to next month, there were people supposed to be going to Krakow, Prague, and Paris. Now, I think our chances are a zilch at this stage. Which is a bit unfortunate because the first time we ventured beyond England or beyond Britain, rather, we we're going to go abroad. Obviously, all of those things have to be cancelled. So there's a lot of things have to be put on hold or cancelled or postponed or waited for for next year, which is disappointing. But in other ways, you can keep up U3A, you can keep up contact as much as possible. And um, I would hope that people would, you know, take heart from the fact that even though we're very restricted on what we can do, that it is possible to keep together and to keep the group group going and to keep it on. The other thing I have to say is that we have a wonderful committee, great cooperation. You know, th there's no rows. We just get on with it and people come up with suggestions. And if you're looking for help, there's always somebody who says, I can do that for you, or I'll sort of sort that out, or I know somebody who will help out. And that is brilliant. So that's that's the story of Modern U3A. There you go, Billy. And Thanks, we have a good, good to link with Tour in Ger and France, Geraldine, also. The, the, the oh, yeah, that's right. Link with France. But there's so much, you know, there are, there's a lot more. So if anybody has any questions, <laughs> feel free to ask.
So. I, th I think that's one of the great things about, I suppose, you're, what, what I always look about Monaghan is that, you know, we look at urban areas and we kind of think that that's where you're going to have a huge amount of people come together. But, you know, you, you have generated a fantastic kind of sense of community through the, the U3A group and the amount of stuff that you do. I see Kirsten there has a question, has she? Kirsten, can you, uh, you should be able to speak okay, I hope. Yes, fully. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, fully for Geraldine. Um, how do you manage to um, phase your activities? You seem to do an awful lot, which is commendable, but I was just wondering, do you plan them over days or weeks? A lot of them are on during the daytime. Um, some are kind of set in stone insofar as that the walk is on a Wednesday at half ten, you know, that kind of thing. But the rest of them, yeah, we would kind of uh, work on a timetable, basically, you know, like, like school and work it from there. And um, sometimes we jiggle them around, you know, uh, we're going to try uh, French on Zoom now in, in uh, this week. And normally we would have that on a Tuesday, but I've actually switched it to a Thursday. So it's a matter of cooperation, it's a matter of kind of thinking, OK, what can we fit in here? What can we do there? Um, and as I said, we've been lucky in that, that we can hire out the soccer club at a reasonable rate to hold most of our stuff, you know, when, when things are normal. So that's what we've done. Does that help? That's fantastic. Thank you very much for that. Geraldine, Ray here. Billy? Yes, Ray. Right. Yeah. Hi, Geraldine. That, that's a really fine story, Geraldine. Well done. Uh, I, you know, I, it's a very impressive, uh, first of all, membership, and uh, secondly, the list of things that you've been doing. But I wonder if you have a membership fee and how many of your members are actually paid up if you do have a fee? Yeah, we, we charge, it's 15 euro for an individual, it's 20 euro for a couple. That was to get the men in, which has been quite successful, um, that per year, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. that's the flat rate, and they all pay off pretty well. Um, for classes like Pilates, for instance, where we have to pay um, the instructor, we charge three euro per person. Mm -hmm. Same is true for choir. So three euro is our standard rate. Occasionally, something like art. We're doing art classes online as well at the moment. Actually, to start today, there's one going on at the moment of this week. Um, it's, it might be a more a flat rate. You know, it might be say 35 quid for, for 10 classes and we might subsidize it. But that has worked out very well. Now things like the talks, for instance, we don't charge people and we give them a cup of tea and a bit of cake as well. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so yeah, we have to cover the costs of obviously the soccer, of hiring the soccer club and the instructors where we have to, where we have to pay for outside instructors. And Geraldine, do you collect your fee at the meetings or how do you arrange that? Uh, we try and get it at the AGM. Um, now, we did have, we did have to go, we did have a kind of a box in Age Action, the Age Action shop where people could drop the money in, we collect it from there, but that has to go now. Um, we do try and get it at the start of the year, just in one go, and try and clear it that way. Again, we have a few people in on the committee who are ex-bankers. And they're very good at collecting the money and sorting things out. And I leave all the finances to them. I have nothing to do with the financial sort of situation. But no, we don't collect it. Now, when they, if they were going to say a Pilates class, they drop the money in, you know, uh, they, they would drop the three euro in. And then one of the committees is usually there to pick up or whatever, you know. So, um, and again, I think, you know, if you charge for something like Pilates, I think it gives people a sense of ownership that they, you know, that they, you know, they, they do it. But a lot of things are free, like the book club we don't charge for, the, um, the walks we don't charge for, you know, the talks we don't charge for at all. So it's only where we really have to pay in structure that we would put a charge and in. Geraldine, what, what, um, uh, what percentage of your 600 members would you have paid up? Uh, you'd probably have to go ask the, the our financial officers, but uh, mm. the majority. Hey, man, would you think the majority get paid up? Oh yeah, I think they're all yeah. they're all yeah, uh, yeah they 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 yeah. they're they're not they're not uh, not a legit member until they've <laughs> subscribed yeah. their their fifteen euro or whatever you know yeah, yeah. we must go they and all visit would you. have at some stage yeah. or other yeah we must go and visit you when everything about COVID is over <laughs> correct yeah. learn a few lessons Absolutely. you're very welcome <laughs> but they would.
they would get a text from the fi financial officers to say, you know, you haven't paid up. So, you know, unless you pay up by X date, by, yeah. usually by July, uh, yeah. you'll not be a member anymore. So. Right, right. Okay. Can Thanks I so ask much, a Sergeant. question? Are you taking yeah. questions? Yes, certainly. Okay. I'm Eileen. Hello, everybody. Hello, Eileen. How are you doing? From U3A Sutton Baldoyle. We're in existence since 2005. Um, can I ask you, uh, we're in an or urban area and our model is not like your model, which is more or less the UK trust model yeah. running courses, because we have other groups doing all the things that you do under your umbrella. Just one, we don't have any paid employees supporting us. It's all 100% volunteers. We don't have a subscription. We just have a donation of two euro every time they come along to us. Okay. How many uh, full-time paid uh, employee um, uh, staff do you have? Is that part of the grant process for no. the, the le leader program, isn't it, and cross-border? Is that where you're getting your funding from? No, we have no paid employees. It's all voluntary. It's all the committee. Okay, and what about the the... The, the funding on the cross border. I'll leave that to Eamon to answer because I'm not as clear on that. Eamon? Well, the, 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 the cross border funding would relate to specific applications where we have something specific coming up, maybe like a conference, you know, or like the song <coughs> fest that we had that we held in Monaghan, you know, we would, we would then go to the various funding bodies and various sponsoring organizations around town, the credit union, the banks, some of the commercial undertakings people like that to try and, 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 and uh, raise the funds. Right. And just on clarification then, because you're using the UK Trust logo uh, and your model is more or less UK Trust, did you have to clear that with the UK Trust or did you just take it on board? We just, we just took it on board. Actually, we're in the process of uh, making a new logo out for ourselves at the moment. Uh, my as Eamon said, my daughter's a graphic designer. So um, we, uh, she's she's meant to be doing uh, out a logo specifically for modern U three A at the moment. Um, okay, well because when, when we set up in about two thousand and five, uh, it was um, we we took on the new logo, way age action uh, logo, but what yeah. we do within the urban area, uh, it's uh, we link up to all of these organisations. But we have we, we actually have been up in Virginia years and years ago, as well as Belfast and the Northern Ireland U Tree A groups, and it was marvelous. So hopefully after this public health crisis, which probably it looks as if it will be the middle of next year, we'll be out and about in person. Because we're mm -hmm. not we meet in the public library, but the Neffet has said no older persons group can now meet in a library till at least the middle of next year. That seems to be the latest information we're picking up. But we have been meeting in car parks. <laughs> we have been meeting in the sea coast. We have been out in the middle, uh, having boot clubs in the middle of, of a castle car park and others have been <laughs> zooming. And we've been doing all of our exercises with Age and Opportunity and Ciel Bleu. So, and then we, because we're members of Age Friendly Older Persons Council, we actually had got um, complimentary face coverings and we had to go out and meet people and in car parks or go out and text messages and, you know, deliver these very good yeah. quality. So it was a great way to keep in contact to find out how you're going. But everybody is. Everybody knows we won't be getting back together again. But hopefully, we'll have some. Of, we cancelled all of our events, but we may have a speakers, and we will be hosting hopefully via Age Action on a webinar like this because we wouldn't really have the technology. We'd have the skill, but we wouldn't really have the technology to deliver that. So it's marvelous the variety. But all of the other things you do, you don't have active retirement as such in your territory. Sure, you don't have uh, an adult education programs. Yeah, there is, is an active the, retirement association down in the south of the county, all right, yeah. But that... Sorry, hello? In south County, Monaghan. What happened there? Did I didn't get... I didn't went silent. 
Not sure. sure. I just have visions of driving around North Dublin and finding Eileen wandering in car parks. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, my the broadband in North Dublin is not the best, even though so I think Monaghan is better. Uh, yeah, well, you, say, you, you, no, would, you would have found us, Billy, you know, sort of meeting up. But no, <laughs> we're, we're, not, we're not doing that, unfortunately. <laughs> Can I, I just got, I don't mean to interrupt you, but just one of the things Eileen said there was that, you know, they had obviously got a planned programme of speakers um, ready for the, through to the end of the year. And um, I, I'm not going to announce it, Eileen, yet, but one of the speakers that, that they had lined up, they've been able to pass on to us. So again, if there's any of you that have, have speakers that are lined up for stuff during the year, we can certainly use the, the Age Action Zoom conference call system to, to set it up and to do that and to, to run those speakers for you. Can I, at this stage, maybe bring in um, Donal? Donal, are you still, you're still there, I hope? Hello, Billy. Really. Donald, you are yes, good. Thank you very much. Now, so if you you if you hit the share screen, we should be able to bring up your your PowerPoint there. Yeah, I'm just going to practice this. That's okay. Um, we're all we're all doing this. We're all learning today. So. Now, uh, share, 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 share. There we are. Now, can you see that? You can. Start us. There we yes. go. Yes. Yes. Yep. Excellent. And I'll go to slideshow. Slideshow on it shows, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, from the beginning. Oh, great. Works. There we go. Yep, perfect. I've learned something myself. Uh, so that's just our mission. These are about 10 slides, and I'll run through them very, very quickly because I'm conscious of our time. But uh, so we're, we're a group that shares our interests, and we're privileged to live in an area where we have a very high percentage of. Uh, retired uh, academics uh, from the universities and third level institutions and so we haven't had uh, any problems with getting people to come forward and, and uh, that's just a, a couple of quotes uh, Susie Quattro you recognize Donald Denham you won't but I got there first that's what I uh, maintain um, I have uh, uh, four children and three grandchildren Two of the children and all three grandchildren have the misfortune to live in Melbourne, Australia. Uh, and thank you, they're all doing fine despite their second lockdown experience. Uh, but it has meant that since I retired in 2015, we've spent a lot of time traveling to uh, Melbourne, Australia up to now. Uh, and while I was there in 2016 for about five months, uh, somebody said, you should join the local U3A. And that's what I did. Uh, and enjoyed it very much. And when I came back, uh, I discovered that Age Action were the um, umbrella body responsible for uh, U3A here in Ireland. Um, and uh, having done a Google search, I made contact with uh, our friend Sam, who has now moved on to other things. Uh, I followed up with a letter to the Dohi community newsletter um, which has a circulation of about 4,000 in the area. And I received one reply uh, uh, from an extraordinary lady who's, I hope, still listening in, uh, Annie Johnson, uh, who used to work for the BBC, uh, of all places, and uh, is a, a lady of great um, uh, intelligence and talent and uh, good contacts as well. So we, we blanketed all the local clubs, news uh, and other social media. Uh, we had a launch meeting in the new Dunleary Library called the Lexicon. Uh, we had good encouragement and support from Age Action. Uh, we had a bet as to who, how many would turn up. Uh, and I won that because I chose the 60. But in fact, 90 turned up on the day and 60 signed up. And so we had to find very quickly a new location, which we did in Glass Tool, which is right in the center of our area between Dunleary and Dawkey. Uh, and the rest is history almost. Uh, we have 220 members at the moment and a curriculum of events, which include a main thematic talk once a fortnight, a current affairs discussion group, which meets once a month and which has uh, a very good occasional participant and I, Causeway you, and Monaghan, you might be interested in this. His name is Ian Partsley of all uh, names. Uh, he's um, chairman of the European Movement in Belfast. 
uh, and he's a, a political commentator uh, and a very, very interesting person to have along and very well informed on Brexit and more recently on, uh, on the pandemic. So we also have a German conversation uh, class, uh, an art uh, appreciation group, a music appreciation group, a poetry appreciation group, and a philosophy group. And uh, we've now moved basically fully uh, online using Zoom. Uh, we have an account and we have a, a guru, our treasurer, Ray Burke, who's also listening in. And thank you again, Ray, for everything you do. Um, and uh, our programs are continuing to run. Uh, our plans, just to give you an idea, uh, I have been on from uh, Dawkey, County Dublin, talking with people in Melbourne, Australia, at their U3A meetings, uh, their political affairs meeting, which was very interesting. Um, the Australian example is one that uh, we basically have uh, tried to follow to some extent, where they have a, they've been established now for some 25 years. Uh, they have 1,500 members and they have something like 80 uh, short and longer courses uh, through the year. Uh, moving on. Uh, yes, uh, membership is open to all, uh, irrespective of ability religion, ethnicity, or academic achievement. Uh, we have uh, university professors, as I said. We have people who left school without any qualification. Uh, we have a great range and, uh, of talented people who participate. Uh, uh, Joe Murray in Bray did our website for us, and if you all want to have a look at it, it's there, www.u3adldk.ie. Uh, and I'm glad to say that um, over the last two years, uh, subgroups have, of our own original group have uh, sprung up in Monkstown, in Bray, and in Greystones. So um, that's, that's basically it. I'll unshare the screen now, if I, uh, if I can do that. Uh, and stop share, there we go. Okay. Just yep, things I'd like to end up with, if I might, uh, because I think it's important. From the beginning here in Ireland, uh, we have found that demand has exceeded supply. So there is a huge demand for uh, people to uh, continue lifelong learning in a social situation uh, in, 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 in the way we do it. I do think people need some support and encouragement, particularly at the start. Uh, to get groups up and running. And I think that's where Age Action Billy has a very important role to play. I think you can also uh, help to improve the links between existing groups because I think there could be a uh, great benefit from more sharing of information and speakers and the like. Um, and uh, it helps, uh, and, and um, Eileen touched on this, uh, and Geraldine too, it does help to have people with certain skills in your group, uh, in particular uh, IT skills, and uh, we've been very fortunate in being able to tap into that. But it doesn't have to be one person, it could be a small committee uh, of people to uh, to share their, their IT skills. Um, and just to mention, we have a steering group of eight people who meet regularly and to handle all the administration. We have a constitution, we have an annual general meeting, we have an annual subscription, and we have a healthy bank balance, I'm glad to say. <laughs> Thank you, Donald. And I'm going, to, I'm going to move straight. I know some of you may have questions. I'm going to ask just maybe to hold them for a few minutes, because what I'd like to do is to bring Vini Martin in at this stage. Um, because I think um, to have, I suppose, Geraldine and Eamon talked about their links with Northern Ireland and Donal, I suppose, also kind of brought in the way that they, they run the, the, the group in, in DLDK. And Vini, I think from her, her own uh, professional background and what she's doing currently as well, um, would have some, some interesting things to add to that. So Vini, are you okay there to, to join us at this stage? Yes, I'm fine. Thank um, you. Let me put up speaker view. Um, uh, hello everyone. Uh, thank you very much Billy for inviting me to come along. Uh, I'm delighted to be here because I have a foot on both sides of the border as it were. 
um, uh, coming, my background, I think it's useful to know that, is that um, I, I'm from Donegal originally, went to university in Dublin. Uh, <laughs> can you hear us all right? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I, like, I like the sound of Donegal, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Donegal, <laughs> Donegal, Derry, Donegal, Derry, that bit of the, the country. Uh, and then uh, university in Dublin. And when my husband and I were finishing our PhDs in Trinity, the regional technical colleges opened. So we applied for jobs in Waterford and a few others, but the one that wanted us was Waterford. So off we went to Waterford, we'll give it a wee try, and we stayed there for 40 years. So, uh, and you couldn't have found a better place in the world. I to couldn't have found a better place. <laughs> we were very happy and we were very grateful and we love Waterford dearly. Uh, my, uh, my role in Waterford, I began as a lecturer in uh, zoology. And then after about 10 or 12 years, uh, they wanted to set up a formal Department of Adult and Continuing Education. So I was invited to uh, do that or I got a job doing that and uh, worked very hard. And within about 10 year period, we had 4,000 students in Waterford in the adult education. And that was a huge learning pro process for me because I knew nothing about it. I was learnt as I went along and learnt by my mistakes. Uh, but uh, what I learned during my period in adult education has been extremely useful to me in now uh, inputting into U3A. Um, let me see, is there anything else I needed to say? Uh, oh yeah, when Eric and I retired in 2011 or thereabouts, uh, again, as you do when you retire, you think, what are we going to do for the next, hopefully, 15, 20, 30 years? And we decided we'd make a big decision and we would move. We were very happy in Waterford, but we lived way out in the country and it wasn't the best for getting old. So we decided we'd move and we like small towns and we wanted to be near relatives in the north again and our daughter in Glasgow. So we took the plunge and we moved here to Coleraine. But I have to say, one of the factors in moving to Coleraine was looking at the website for Causeway U3A, because I have to be doing things. And the Causeway U3A seemed to be a very vibrant U3A, and it was doing lots of things. And I thought, mm, we'll have something to do at least. And we'll have a way of meeting people and making friends, because we know, knew nobody. So we came up here five years ago. And my son said to me, within five years, you'll be running that U3A. And here I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, water, I was involved with the U3A in Waterford. And it was interesting that that came out of the adult education. Uh, Dr. Anne Jordan uh, was our intellectual in adult education. And Anne read up all about these things. And she came to me one day and told me about this concept of U3A, which had come out of France. And uh, a little while later, we talked to the college and we got something going. So we started with the old original model, which was to grow out of a university or a college. But it's not an easy model to operate in the Irish or UK situations. So within a little while, we went more to the UK model, which is where each uh, U3A is an autonomous entity and basically opportunists. We do things what, where we can for whoever we can. So we went that way. We still had links with the college in Waterford. But uh, I'm going to tell you in a little while, we went full circle when I came to Coleraine. That's another story. So that's where I'm coming from. I suppose the skills that you need in a U3A to be any way effective is just to be enthusiastic and to have the skill of getting people to work with you and do things for you. I can see Geraldine doing that very well. She's <laughs> talking to us about it and, you know, the tap on the shoulder and how about and I need help with and not being afraid to ask and being nice and cajoling and, <laughs> and you get a lot out of it. Convincing people that what you put in, you get out many times. Now, of course, I have a talk, but I'm not going to go through half of this because it'd be terribly boring. 
<laughs> you all know that being uh, uh, a Northern Ireland U3A, we come under the Third Age Trust. And I must say, that was an eye-opener for me when I moved up here, because the Third Age Trust is, because of the scale of membership of the U3As, there are half a million members in the uh, UK of U3A, and there are uh, 1,000 I can never carry these in my head. 1,050 U3As uh, in the UK. And each person in that membership contributes about six pounds to the trust from their membership fees. So the trust has a good amount of money to be able to do all the things the trust does. It does research for us. It provides guidelines, templates for policies, and uh, anything you need to know it's there for you. To be quite honest, I hardly ever looked at it until COVID hit us. And when COVID hit us, you needed the information uh, packaged and digested and put out in a form that was useful to UCAs. So the Third Age Trust has been extremely helpful in that. Here in Causeway, uh, we formed in 1995 and have 1,300 members. Um, we have a committee. I think all of you have that sort of, uh, either a steering group or a committee or something like that. Um, and we're responsible for the finances, communications, communications, Facebook, website, etc. I'm going to show you a bit of the website later, but the website was actually a project by ourselves for ourselves. So a proper U3A project. We made it, four of us got together and did the website from knowing nothing about websites. <laughs> so I might just go into this said website. So let me do now, I'll see now if I can follow that act of screen sharing. So, and then I'll talk around some of the things from the website. Has that come up? Yep. Yes. Yes. Mm. No, just the website. Okay, so there we are, our front page, what we are and what we do. Um, it's much like Monaghan. Uh, we have social events, Christmas lunch. Cuppa and chat is just a monthly coffee, coffee morning for new members particularly to meet them and greet them monthly meetings, Sunday all sorts. That's a Sunday lunch for people who live alone. So they can all go out together and have Sunday lunch. Somebody coordinates that, which is quite nice. And we have monthly quiz, which is good fun. Uh, holidays and day trips. They went last year down to County Clare, to Lister and Varna. I suspected somebody was looking for a husband, but they didn't come back with any. Mm. And uh, we had pl planned a trip to Cyprus, but that was cancelled. Our keeping in touch mainly is by newsletters. So uh, just to show you a newsletter, some groups get a bit hung up on doing something terribly posh, a newsletter with a banner and a logo and fancy things. We just do an email to all members. And we don't even put attachments because a lot of our members can't even open attachments. So we just put it into the text of the email things that are going on and tell them about it. The newsletters are prime. We do that twice a month. That's our primary method of communication. I have a page on COVID. And ever-changing regulations. I think it's probably worse in the UK than it is in the South. Although uh, I have friends who are imprisoned in Donegal and can't get out at the moment. Uh, um, I suppose the way we're structured is that there are these central activities like holidays and monthly meetings and things, but most of what happens in Causeway is activities that are run as groups. And they have a lot of autonomy. They decide what, where and when and how much. 
each group. And each group is self-financing. So I'll just go into activities. Now, in a normal time, we would have, I, actually, I've gone to the wrong place. I didn't want to go there. I'm going to go back because down here, in a normal year, like 2019 to 20, up to April, we would produce a little handbook like this. And in the little handbook, we would list, this is on our website. Everything here is on our website. So if you want any of it, you can get it. Uh, at the, uh, in that, we would put, there's our social activities, speakers for the every month. Other social activities I've mentioned already, holidays and day trips. We do some seminars and short courses, IT training. We have this rump of about 100 members out of 1300 who don't have email. And they're the bane of my life because they're so hard to communicate with. And we have to write them letters from time to time and post them at vast expenditure of time, effort, and money. But anyway, that's another story. I'm going to come back to that. Um, well, I'll do it since I'm here. Uh, something that might interest you. I said that way back in 1972, U3As came out of the University of Toulouse and its adult education program. Uh, here in Coleraine, when I came here, I knocked on the door of the university and nobody wanted to know me, nobody wanted to talk to me, nobody wanted to talk to U3A. They were a university, they were doing their research, they were looking after their undergraduate school away. But we kept knocking. And in due course, the penny dropped that there were no links between the university and the local community. So when they did their next strategic plan, they had a pillar which was called local and community links. And as such, we were invited eventually to go to the university and talk to them about what we wanted. And out of that has come wondrous things. The initiative Ulster University in Coleraine copied from Dublin City University. Dublin City University had a European project called the Age Friendly University. So they learned from that and then took that model and invited us to work with them as a kind of pilot project, project for Northern Ireland. And out of that has come uh, use of the sporting facilities. They have wonderful sporting facilities for their undergrads, which are sitting there practically unused during <laughs> the periods. So we are very happy to use them. They have a theater, so we are able to have drama and theater skills. Uh, they have a, uh, a commercial kitchen and a program on hospitality. So we're able to do cooking for fun, which has been great. They were <clears throat> making a statue for Coleraine. So we were invited to come in and help with some little bits of the statue. So that was funny. We're involved with research. The payback for them is that they have 1,300 people who can, if you're doing any type of research on aging, health or social or needs of older people. You have a bank of people that you can call on to become involved in research and they, that's their payback. We use their amenities. But the part that excited me most was that they have now opened some of their lectures to us and we can go into the university and sit in these lectures. We have a little bit of control. We just send them a list of who's coming, what, where and when so that they know who we are and that we're not terrorists or anything scary. We don't even look scary. And uh, we attend lectures in history and English are the most popular in the university. Now COVID has come in and we've actually talked with them and some of these lectures are being provided for undergraduates online and we're going to be able to attend those as well. And they have extended it to various environmental topics and health topics. So we'll be able to attend even more lectures online uh, in the coming year. So that has been very, very productive.
Oh, I went out. Sorry, I went out of my share screen. Pressed the wrong button. Silly me. Uh, just give me a wee second here and see what I'm doing. I like that you're doing a sculpture, Vini. Oh, yes. We actually, we actually have a sculpture class going here as well. We have a local lady, Alison Ball. Right. Who leads it. Yeah. I see that Eileen has sent a message there as well, which again, Vini, what you were talking about with the link between the University of Ulster and yes. the lifelong, sorry, lifelong learning mm -hmm. and the age friendly program. Um, DCU yes. and Sutton Belt Oil certainly have linked into that. And again, a similar type thing where people can actually go and sit in on lectures. You must that works out of DCU also. So yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to go back to screen share because I, I did something silly there. As uh, Billy says, we're all learning. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, uh, this is not RTE or BBC or anything else. It's amateurs. Uh, so what was I saying there? I was talking about the age-friendly university. I'm jumping around all over the place. Um, we don't have a premises in Causeway U3A. Uh, we use uh, community halls and schools and church halls, of which there are many, being Northern Ireland. And um, I like it that way. I don't want a premises. I'm very glad we don't have to look after rent and rates and facilities management. You become a different type of organization. And I very much like being out in community groups. Sometimes we're in Star of the Sea, sometimes we're in the Church of Ireland Hall, and uh, sometimes we're in the library. And I like being in all those places and I like being seen. When we go there, we stick up our banner so that people see us. And very often people then will come up and say, what's that all about? And you get a few members that way. Yes, I was just going to talk about uh, COVID. Uh, this is, wouldn't be our regular website because we have to totally adapt because of COVID. And at, at committee level, we discussed, would we do nothing? Would we close the door and do nothing? Would we try and do something? Or would we continue with everything? despite all the regulations. Well, nobody wanted to do everything in spite of the regulations. So we came down to do nothing. And there were people on the committee who thought we should close up and do nothing. But most of the committee felt we should do something. So the things we are doing are two groups. We're doing the outdoor things, the running, the rambling, Nordic walking, because uh, you can meet outdoors and you can socially distance. The Third Age Trust, <clears throat> this may be helpful if some of you are not using it, but on the Third Age Trust website, there are risk assessment forms, which are very helpful. There's a risk assessment form for the venue you're going to use. And then each person has to do a risk assessment. You know, have you been near somebody with COVID? Do you have COVID? Do you have a cough? Um, are you able to travel safely to the venue? There's those sort of questions that each person has to do. So there's a lot of risk assessments to be done around the outdoor activities. And then we had a program to try and get people onto Zoom. And thereby is another story because we had quite a lot of people who didn't, couldn't do it, they didn't have the technical skills, who wouldn't do it because they were scared of doing it, or who, who might do it. So we focused on the ones who might do it, and we got particularly people leading groups, and we put on tutorials and seminars, and we got them involved, and we got about five groups up and running. And then people saw them happening and they thought, well, maybe I could do that. And then we got 10 groups going. So it was had a snowball effect. And then members would say, oh, I have nothing to do. And the winter is coming. So they began to think, oh, well, might do this. So I had a program myself and I, I, I always started by saying, Zoom is only a phone call with pictures. And there's nothing magical and special about it and you can do it, you click on a link and you're in there and you can do it. Then I had the naysayers, most of whom were techie guys from the university. Oh, it's not safe. 
it's insecure, bad things will happen to you. You've probably all been there. None of those bad things happen. It's fine, it works, we do it. It's now, Zoom is like what Hoover is to vacuum cleaner. We're all Zooming around, it's even become a verb. We're Zooming everything, so there you go. May not be the best. The techies tell me there's other things better, but I don't care, we're using Zoom. Sorry, Billy, did you? I was just going to, I, was, I didn't mean to interrupt, but what I was just, I just uh, got a notification on my phone that it's now coming up to 5040. And no, we're fine. I mean, this, the discussion has, it's been a very interesting afternoon. I'm conscious that Ray um, McGrath in Waterford um, was due to come okay. into us as well. Ray, are you, sorry, Vini, I don't mean to cut you off there, but well, if I, I can just bring this, Ray I, in. So all Ray the is there. that are working and you okay. can see it on our website. Okay, and that's my last one. So I'll stop my screen share <laughs> And Ray, are you still, uh, you're still yeah, there? Thanks, Billy. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm really happy that you brought me in now because someone is at the door and I, okay. <laughs> I must go and attend. Um, but first of all, I just want to say uh, thanks to, to Vini. Vini, you've uh, done part of my job for me as far as Waterford is concerned. And I just want to publicly acknowledge the inspiring work you did not only for U3A in Waterford, but also for continuing education. That's how I first met you, Vini. Right. And I, I, I think it was you, as a matter of fact, who brought me into uh, Waterford U3A. And I want to thank you for that as well. It has been a great, it, it's, been, it's, it's, it's been great for me to be involved with, with Waterford U3A. Well done. Uh, I'm not interrupting you, Ray, but I think if you mention the name Vini Martin to anybody involved in education in Waterford, she's known as a powerhouse. And uh, yes, indeed, I re echo what Ray said. Thank you very much for all the work that you did in this area over the years. And Ray, back to you. But so. just, to, just to give a very brief story, Vini, I mean, I was basically new coming back to Waterford. And I arrived in your office one day with a page of paper. And I said, uh, I'd like to give this to the, to the Director of Continuing Education. Uh, I think it fills a gap uh, in your um, adult education or continuing education curriculum. You looked at it and within a few days, I think you had offered me a job. And I, I felt you were so open to, 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 uh, to innovation and, and adding stuff to the curriculum. So again, thanks for that. But it's, it's a mark of how you went about your work, inspiring people. And that's what you've done for U3A. And now it's a humbling experience really to listen not only to you, but to everyone that has spoken so far about their work in U3A. And I'm taking away a number, a number of lessons. But I suppose just to come back to where we are in Waterford U3A today, it's a small, uh, it's a small group. Uh, we at one stage talked about putting a cap of perhaps 60 because we thought the personal interaction, the social aspect was so important that we didn't want to lose that. And there may be other ways of not losing it apart from putting a cap on numbers. Uh, but that's where we are. Um, I asked when, uh, uh, early on, I'd asked, uh, I, I think it was Geraldine, wasn't it Geraldine, about how you collect your fees or your membership fees. And, and th that has been a bit of an issue uh, for us. Uh, we operate a, really on a, on a very small budget, but then our overheads are, are not great. Uh, we have meetings once a month, talks once a month yes. in, uh, for 10 months of the year in one of the library rooms, uh, one of the newer libraries in Waterford. That has been great and the library has been really cooperative. Uh, and, but listening to, uh, to what has been happening elsewhere, one of the things I'm taking away from today is perhaps uh, working, uh, uh, um, building on the community relationships. Uh, now we, Vini, we haven't been in, in really, we haven't been engaged, I suppose, with Waterford Institute um, for the past few years. And maybe it's time to take a fresh look at that as well. Um, so yeah, engaging with community groups may, may be important for us into the future. And COVID will come to an end. Listen, COVID will come to an end and we'll, back, we'll be back face to face again. Um, in the meantime, and before COVID hit us, we had in Waterford reached out to Wexford 
and I think were helpful to Wexford in, in, in their coming into existence about a year and a half ago, two years ago now. Uh, and we are involved with Wexford and with Age Action Ireland in looking at responses to the digital divide. Um, I, as part of U3A and the Older People's Council in Waterford, work on a social, social isolation group, which was set up in response to, to the COVID situation. And one of the things we're finding is the, the digital divide does exist. And whether it's 50% or 60% or 70% of the over 65s who are not online, it's, uh, in our view, it is so much is happening online that people can be isolated, even more isolated, if they're not connected. So we need responses to the digital divide. And we're working on that. One of the, one of the things discussed at the last meeting of the social isolation group was the setting up of um, of uh, learning uh, learning circles where two, three, four, four people perhaps would be involved, which would retain the sort of person to person uh, a, a relationship, which seems to be, and I'm convinced it is very important in responding to social isolation. That's one of the things that we're sort of keen to build on. And with the advantage now of Zooming, uh, we can extend that out from our own geographical location in Waterford to other parts of the country. And through the summer school that Billy and Annette set up, uh, I think we were able to, to communicate with other, other areas of the country. And I think there's a great future, Billy, in that kind of webinar, uh, where we do really, I fully agree with your earlier remarks right at the beginning, that Zoom does offer that possibility. Um, we've also uh, a, attempted communication or, or engagement with uh, South Wales with the Priscelli U3A. Now, we were just about to visit uh, Priscelli U3A in an exchange visit when, when COVID came, and it was planned for this summer. But that, that will be on the cards, being our, our, our nearest UK, uh, uh, I suppose, group. Uh, we see we see tremendous possibilities there, and a great deal of shared interest. So, what else? Um, yeah, uh, I think that's about. Uh, yeah, uh, that's yeah, that's about it um, for Waterford U3A. We're we're very close, of course, to to Tremor uh, U3A, which is Tremor's only seven seven miles away. And uh, some of our members from Tremor are in fact members of U3A as well. And we're looking at ways and means of perhaps um, um, uh, consolidating uh, those relationships um, as well. Uh, and there was one other thing that came to mind as I, as I was listening into your, to your contributions, uh, but it would come perhaps out of the questions that you may have. So that's it, Billy. For, thank you, Ray. Uh, thank you. And um, I, I am conscious of the fact that it, it is now 10 to 4, and we did say that we would finish this up at between 3.30 and quarter to 4. Um, I think it's been a really useful, to, I found it very useful to have the discussion and to listen to what has happened in various um, different parts of the country. Um, I hope it's been useful for those of you who came together with us this afternoon. And um, uh, Yes, Jardine has just mentioned their generation tech. Yeah, we've actually, Age Action are linked in with them, actually. Um, mm. We've been linked in with them since the beginning of COVID. One of the things that has happened is that we got a lot of offers from people working in the technology industry. Um, and that was kind of, I suppose, um, uh, centralized through generation tech and um, generation X, I think there's another organization that's supposed to come to me now either. Um, and they've been, I suppose, providing training for people in the use of Zoom. Um, and I know there's lots of other kind of areas like that you've mentioned that people who are doing that kind of work. Age Action developed what's called its Getting Started Kit. And if you go onto the Age Action website, for anybody that you know of who has difficulties or experiencing um, issues around downloading Zoom and using Zoom or WhatsApp or just email on their smartphone, they can actually, you can actually print that off. There's a brochure that they can be printed off for them. And I think it's well worth, um, worth using. So. I, I want to, I, I know there have been questions and I know that some of the comments have come in. We will try to reply to those. So I just want to say thank you very much to everybody for joining in today. 
I hope it was worthwhile for you. And um, I look forward to, to doing some more. We have some events that are coming up later in the week, which might be of interest to people. And I'm just going to put them up there. Um, there's some things, because obviously this week is Positive Aging Week. And uh, we, these are some of the events that are, if you want to pass those on to any of your own members, they're all done via Zoom. So please, we would encourage people to, to join in with us. And the last thing that I want to say, 